Welcome to Y Lecture Online. In the previous video, we got a conceptual view of the function that we're going to use to try and figure out the line integral of. So here we have the function where the z is a function of x and y, and the function was equal to 2 plus x squared times y. And so here we kind of have a view of that. Then we're going to do a line integral using the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, only the upper half of that semicircle, or I should say the semicircle, which is the upper half of the full circle. And notice that we then have the equivalent of that red line here that indicates the circle portion embedded on top of the function. And so what we're trying to do now when we try to find the line integral is calculate the area underneath that curve all the way for the semicircle from this end over here to the other end on the far end right there. So now we're going to do that. We're going to use parametric equations. We're going to take the equation and replace y and x in terms of the angle of theta using the circle right here, the line over which we're going to integrate. And notice that y can be defined as the sine of theta and x is the cosine of theta because the radius of that circle is equal to 1. And then the derivative of that, the differential dy, will be cosine of theta d theta, and dx will be minus the sine of theta d theta, the differentials of x and y right here. Also notice that we have an expression for ds in terms of x and theta. ds will be equal to the dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared, that's using Pythagorean theorem in essence, times d theta when we take ds d theta, take the d theta over here, so we have an expression for ds and we'll replace this by this quantity right here. So now we're going to write the integral in terms of theta rather than in terms of x and y. So that's now going to become the following. So the, what we call line integral of the function ds integrated over the semicircle defined by that equation can now be written as the integral from zero to pi, because we're going to go halfway around the circle, so the angle will start at zero, end up at pi, and we're going to have the quantity 2 plus x squared, but since x is equal to the sine of theta, that'll be the sine square of theta times, oh, oh okay, not the sine square of theta, it's going to be the cosine square of theta. I have the not a good idea, x and so y I should have written that like that. So this is going to be the cosine square of theta times y, which is the sine of theta times ds. Now ds is going to be equal to this, which is equal to the square root of dx d theta. Now dx d theta will be the negative sine of theta, so minus sine of theta, and of course I have to square that, plus dy d theta, which will be the cosine of theta, and we'll have to square that, cosine of theta squared, and then times d theta at the end. Well, let me get rid of this negative one here and write d theta at the end there. So now, of course, we realize that this is the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared, squared theta, which is equal to 1. So this can now be rewritten as the integral from 0 to pi of 2 plus the cosine squared of theta sine of theta times 1 d theta. All right, now that's beginning to be a relatively easy integral because if we let u equal the cosine of theta, so let u equal the cosine of theta, then du will be equal to the derivative of that, which is the negative sine of theta d theta. So in order to integrate the cosine square of theta, like u squared, I need a negative sine d theta here and only have a positive sine d theta. So what I can do here is turn this into two integrals. The first integral from 0 to pi of 2d theta. And the second one will be a minus 1. So minus 1 times the integral of the cosine square of theta times a minus 1 sine of theta d theta. So I've added a negative 1 because I need that for my differential. And of course, I put the negative 1 in front here. And again, the limits are from 0 to pi. And now I'm ready to integrate this. So the first one, I get 2 theta from 0 to pi minus, and here that will be uh, the cosine cube of theta divided by theta and evaluated from 0 to pi. Okay, let's go ahead 
and evaluate that and see what we get. So this is equal to an equal sign there. So plug in the upper limit, I get 2 pi. The lower limit, I get 0. So that's 2 pi. And then minus, when I plug in the upper limit, I get the cosine of pi, which is a negative 1. I cube that. Oh, wait a minute. This should be divided by 3, shouldn't it? So again, um, <laughs> when I plug in pi, I get uh, negative 1 cubed. I get negative 1 divided by 3. That would be negative 1 third. And then when you plug in the lower limit, I get 1 divided by 3. And of course, I'm subtracting that. So it would be a negative 1 third. So it would be negative 1 third again. And you can see that this negative negates that negative. So end up with 2 pi plus 2 thirds. And that would then be the result of our integral. And that would then be the area of this basically curtain, this area underneath the curve, which is the semicircle there, basically placed on top of the function that's a function of z. And that's how it's done.